Hi and Assalamualaikum. My name is Umu Kalsum binti Yaakob. My metric number is 273780. Our group will present an article about improving hospital cost accounting with activity-based costing. Hospitals, like many healthcare organizations, are confronted by a challenging and competitive environment. Increased competition, greater focus on the quality of patient care, and the high cost of a new technology are among the factors forcing this organization to re-examine the manner in which they provide service to their patient and the cost of those services. In order to control the cost, hospital administrators need cost information that is suitable for their decision-making needs. I will be presenting about conventional costing in hospital organization. As before ABC costing were introduced, the management used conventional costing which involves three stages of cost allocation. In stage 1, allocation involves the tracing of direct costs to cost object, which may include departments, divisions, territories or product. Next, in stage 2, allocation involves allocating and reallocating costs from one cost object to another cost object, except a product cost object. And lastly, in stage 3, allocation involves allocating indirect costs to product or services. Among these three stages of cost allocation, the tracing of direct costs to cost object, which is in stage 1, is relatively simple as compared to other two stages which require the selection of an appropriate base for allocation. For instance, in determining the standard full cost per patient meal served by dietary department, it is quite simple to trace the direct cost of ingredient and labor to each patient meal. On the other hand, in allocating other support department costs such as maintenance department or administration to the dietary department and applying the department's indirect costs like salaries and fringe benefits of dietitian, cost of cooking utensils, and allocated support department costs to each patient meal, some allocation base have to be selected. With conventional costing system, one allocation base is generally selected for one cost pool. For example, in allocating maintenance department costs to the dietary department, the use of maintenance hours provided as the allocation base is sufficient because the cost effect relationship between benefits received by dietary department and the cost of operating the maintenance department is related. On the other hand, if administrative costs, which include cost of operating the accounting, finance, personnel and other administrative department are allocated to the dietary department on some basis like number of employee or total salary paid. The resultant cost allocation can be misleading and unfair. This is because there is no direct cost effect relationship between the accounting services provided to the dietary department and the number of employee in that department. This allocation type will penalize the department with a large number of employees and suboptimal decision may result because this department 
would try to reduce their share of the allocated costs by cutting the headcounts and eventually reducing or eliminating certain essential services. Consequently, better type of cost allocation should be used in determining the standard full cost per service unit. Thank you. Hello and Assalamualaikum. My name is Shadata Atira Binti Karunizam. My metric number is 273830. I will be presenting the next subtopic which is activity-based costing. During late 1980s, many managers and accountants become discontented with their conventional costing systems, especially those in the manufacturing industry. This is because many of these conventional systems can be described as volume-based cost accounting system. That is, indirect costs are applied to products by using some volume-related allocation bases such as direct labor hours or machine hours. This will affect the cost of the product which is Low volume products will be under cost and high volume product will be over cost by using this system. This was convincing to most manufacturing managers who believe that high volume products should enjoy a higher margin than low volume products because of the greater efficiency achieved through economies of scale. The dissatisfaction with the costing data manifested and led to the development of activity-based costing system. Activity-based costing system focuses on activities as the fundamental cost objects and use the cost of this activity as building blocks for compiling the cost of other cost objects. That is, costs are collected for each activity as separate cost object and then applied to product as they undergo various activities. In the activity-based costing system, the basis of allocation used to incorporate costs into product is called cost drivers and they include factors that increase the total cost of activities. Both volume-related allocation bases, such as direct labor hours and machine hours, also are the volume unrelated allocation bases, such as the number of setups and materials part handle, can be used as cost drivers in an activity-based costing system for applying costs to product. When activity-based costing is used in determining the manufacturing cost of a product, the first task is to identify all activities that are required in its production, the amount of resources used by each activities, and their costs are then traced and applied to the product. As example, a factory that manufactures three different products, the machine has to be set up differently for each product. This is an important activity of the manufacturing process because we want to know the volume for each product. If it can be assumed that setup labor time is the primary resource required, machine setup costs can be applied to the three products. Therefore, by aggregating the cost of all activities required in its production, the manufacturing cost of a product is determined. Also, there is no consistent overcosting of high volume products and undercosting of low volume products with activity based costing. As we can see here, activity based costing system provides more accurate information in allocating the cost to manufacture products based on the various resources used to make the products rather than conventional costing system. But, activity-based costing system is more expensive as there is a cost to collect and analyze cost driver information 
as well as to allocate overhead on the basis of multiple cost drivers. Therefore, management needs to consider each system and how it will work within its own organization. Conventional costing system is optimal when the manufacturing process is labor driven and overhead increases based on traditional activity basis such as direct labor hours, direct labor dollars or machine hours. While activity based costing system is optimal when the manufacturing process is technology driven and overhead increases based on various activities that differ for each product. By adopting an activity based costing overhead allocation system can allow a company to shift manufacturing overhead costs between products based on their volume. Changing from the conventional costing system to activity based costing system is not as simple as having management dictate that employees follow the new system. There are often new challenges that begin with convincing employees that it will provide benefits and that they should use the new system. That's all. Thank you. My name is Nur Hidayah binti Mama Adam, metric number 272757, and I'll be discussing about the application of activity-based costing in the healthcare sector. Activity-based costing can be applied into the healthcare sector where the cost for activities that consume resources are accumulated and then applied to the products on the basis of activities required into their production. In this case, the products are the patients in the hospital and the production are the treatment required for the patients. Standard treatment protocol consisting of the list of services required for the treatment are established for a specific DRG treatment. Activity-based costing with the help of standard treatment protocol gives the accurate standard full cost data and also it helps the management to plan and for cost control. For the application of activity-based costing in the healthcare sector, we are going to take a simple application from the journal which are the costing of laboratory tests. The first task is to identify the activities required in performing the test. The hospital laboratory are responsible in performing four different tasks that are named P, Q, R and S. Each test requires different kind of setup of tools and equipment. These activities are performed by the maintenance department of the hospital. Once the equipment and tools are set up, the laboratory technician will use materials and supplies delivered from the supply processing and distribution department to perform the test. As the tests are conducted, the clerks must complete required document and distribute the test result to the appropriate party. Next is to do the summary of the laboratory cost and the operating data. The cost of direct material and direct label that are related to the cost of each test conducted are recorded. The cost of support services such as maintenance department and supply processing and distribution department are charged to the laboratory by using a specific allocation basis. As the indirect costs of operating the laboratory are identified, the costs are applied to the four tasks conducted by using the basis choose by the hospital. The table above shows the differences of activity-based costing and the conventional costing. As we can see from the table above, Activity-based costing use two different cost driver, which are the machine hour and the material dollar. While 
The conventional costing usually use only one cost driver and for this example, we use direct labor hour to show you the differences in using activity-based costing and conventional costing. For activity-based costing, we use two cost driver which are machine hour for maintenance department cost and material dollar for supply processing and distribution department costs. The second row of the table shows you the data of costs calculated of test Q, P, R and S by using activity-based costing and conventional costing. Using the conventional costing, the cost data for test Q and S shows a significant increment which are 18.21% and 17.13% from the cost data when using activity-based costing. From the table above, we can conclude that the conventional costing has overcosted the cost of test Q and S while undercosted the P and R tests. Activity-based costing reports a more accurate computation of standard full cost data as it focuses on the activities in the laboratory and the resources those activities consume. As well as choosing cost drivers that exhibit a cost-effect relationship with the overhead charge to the laboratory. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello my name is Nusharda binti Abdul Aziz and my metric number 272907 so now I will discuss about the contribution of activity based costing towards the hospital so costs are an important part of the business let them spiral out of control and they will affect both your profitability and cash flow in meeting the needs and wants of customers, organizations have to employ the use and the use of processes and activities. These processes and activities are critical for creating customer value. So, the activity-based costing is a cost management technique which measures the cost and performance of activities, resources and the objects which consume which consume them in order to generate more accurate and meaningful information for decision making. As the modern business has become complex, it is no longer meaningful to assume that overheads are a function of volume only. Businesses now have multiple cost drivers, many of which are trans transaction based rather than volume based. In this case, business need to shift from a function orientation to a process orientation so as to effectively and efficiently meet changing customers needs and wants. So how is the activity based costing contribute for the business? So for the research that we made towards the contribution of activity based costing on the hospital, it is shown that Activity-based costing are more accurate than conventional costing method in determining product costs, not only when the product differ on their demand on various, various resources due to high diversity in volume, volume complexity, materials, and setup, but also when there is a high proportion of volume unrelated overhead costs. Also, with the more informative product cost information that, that is generated from activity-based costing, managers can better identify the relevant costs and are likely to make better decisions in product or service pricing and abandonment as well as in new product or service introduction. Activity-based costing have also assisted managers in 
implementing new strategic directions such as identifying profitable orders for low volume custom orders and also setting competitive bid prices mm. in addition to reporting more accurate product costs and improving managerial decisions activity based costing can also guide managers to effective cost reduction by focusing on the non value added activities Costs can be reduced by decreasing the time and effort required to perform the activity or by eliminating the activity entirely if it does not add value to the company. For example, one way to reduce material handling overhead costs for the hospital is to decrease the distance between the supply processing and distribution distribution department and its major user department <coughs> in this way material can be delivered in the shortest time possible thereby will also reduce the cost of handling another alternative is to have the supplier deliver the materials directly to the user department in which case uh, material handling overhead are material handling overhead costs are totally eliminated. Costs can also be reduced by selecting the low cost activity from the low set of design alternatives and sharing the activity with other product or service unit to yield economics of scales. And that's all for the contribution of activity based costing. Thank you for listening to me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh I'm Nur Afifah Najwa binti Muhammad Azhar My metric number is 273804 In the next subtopic, I will be presenting about implementation of activity-based costing In this article, it's explained that there are two costs that associates with cost system First cost is cost of measurement so what is cost of measurement? It is the cost of reading the information to the cost system and cost of computation. So for a firm who applies conventional or traditional costing, this cost is likely less when applying it rather than the firm who applies activity-based cost. Reasons why the cost drivers that are required by the activity-based costing needed more effort in data collection and measurement. The second cause is cost of error. The cost of error is the cost of producing poor products, capital investment and budgeting decisions. This cost is likely to be higher for a firm who apply conventional costing. This is because, as we all know, conventional costing promotes less accurate product cost information needed. So when is the right time to implement this activity-based costing? The right time is when the cost of measurement exceeded the cost of error. In a simple meaning, the benefit must exceed the cost. So what happened to a company who applies activity-based costing? Here is the development of activity-based costing. The organization's system designers plays an essential role. So, system designers need to conduct an activity analysis. This is to identify the activity that consuming resources. But Bear in your mind that this analysis involves a detailed studies of the company's logistic and accounting information system. Therefore, activity-based costing system is very expensive, difficult, and time-consuming because to identify and trace activity that consuming resources, activity-based costing may be invisible to some company. For a company who finds its economic and technical feasibility, 
A system designer is required to first decide the cost drivers to selected or specific activity. For example, activity overhead like material handling can be under the material moves as cost drivers. So it is very essential for system designers to correctly and accurately select the cost drivers to the specific activity. For a firm who desire a high accuracy of product costings, it needs a higher number of cost drivers. A large cost of products represent a large number of activities. So a firm needs more cost drivers. Next, it is very important to system designer to select a high correlation between cost drivers and consumption of resources in activity. As I mentioned before, the more cost drivers you needed when you have a, a large total cost of products. But bear that in mind that cost of measurement must be in reasonable limits when applying, when choosing this high correlation. Designers need to focus on activities with significant proportions of total cost of products. When the cost of measurement is much more lower than number of drivers, the company need to, need to trade off the desire of having a, lot, a large number of cost drivers with the cost of measurement. So what happened to the instant and frequent costs? The firms need to aggregate the activity into one cost pool. As a conclusion, it is very important for a firm to select the cost drivers within the acceptable limits of the cost of measurement. Remember, we want a very high cost of measurement rather than the cost of error. That's it for me. Thank you.